Rub up your engines. Purvis Summer says, I have a car, I want to paint it another color. Do I need to reprime it? It's going to be from green to red. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Never change the color of a car because if you paint over the old paint, every time you get a door hinge or a little chip, that old paint pops up and it looks horrible. If you really want to go from green to red, you have to strip the entire car down to the bare metal, then reprime it and then paint it. Sad but true, that's the only way to do it. Now, I know people who've done it, I've seen it at good body shops. And I've seen guys spend seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars getting their car completely stripped and everything taken apart, painted, and then all put back together. It's not worth it for most cars to spend that kind of money on a paint job. That's why you always want to paint them the same color. You paint them over, then you get a little chip. It looks okay, but you gotta strip it down to the bare metal if you want to change colors, and that is an insane job to do that right. I mean, face it, you know, they paint the cars before they even put the engines in the cars. So you, if you want to paint the inside of the engine thing, you got to pull the engine off. It's insane. You don't really want to do it, especially green to red. R. Johnson says, why do Corvettes lose their value so fast? They're a high-end sports car, and high-end sports cars generally always lose their value for two reasons. One, they charge way too much for them. They have a high profit margin, so uh, they depreciate quickly just because of that. They're marking them up too much. High-end sports cars, people generally buy them for one reason, to beat the heck out of them and drive like maniacs. They often are, as the horse expression goes, ridden hard and put up wet where they don't get around so it cools down. They're often worn out. And when you buy a used Corvette, a lot of times engine or transmission is just flat worn out and you're going to have to put a lot of money into it. That's the problem with buying a used Corvette and that's why the values are so low. Ford Escort driver says, Scotty, Chevy Cavalier or Dodge Neon, which is worse? Well, there I would have to say that the Chevy is better than the Dodge. The Dodge Neons, they had poor quality control. Uh, you ride on the road, the fillings in your teeth fell out when you hit bumps. They were a small wheelbase and horrible suspension systems. The Cavalier, there are people that actually like those cars. They tended to fall apart as they got older. But I had some customers with Cavaliers that had 150, 160,000. They still ran okay. And I've never seen a Dodge Neon. Go that far. They were just, you know, terrible little runabout cars that they wanted to sell a cheap small car, and that's exactly what you got, a cheap small car. Chance IKZ says, Scotty, there's a difference in reliability between a two-wheel drive BMW and a four-wheel drive BMW. Yes, there certainly is. BMWs are money pits as they age, but if you get a four-wheel drive one, you've doubled the depth of that money pit. They've had a lot of problems with their four-wheel drive systems as they age, and customers of mine, when they had them, the ones that were lawyers and doctors who didn't care and then just wanted them fixed. Some of them spent ten, twelve thousand dollars getting those four-wheel drive systems fixed. The two-wheel drive systems, they don't have as many problems. There's less weight. They get better gas mileage. They're still expensive to repair, but the four-wheel drive ones are much more expensive to repair. Not that I tell anybody about either of them. MG says, I got a 2009 Ford Ranger. Good pick, yes or no? Depends if it's been taken care of. It's a 10-year-old Ranger. They can last a really long time. It's modern enough. It's 2009. A lot of computer controls. Before you buy a vehicle like that, you have a guy like me hook up his dealer level scan tool, spend an hour analyzing it and driving it around. And if he says it's good, hey, go ahead and buy it. They can last a really long time. But like any modern car, everything's computer run. They can't hide that computer information from a high level scan tool. Doesn't matter if they unplug warning lights and stuff. That means nothing to the computer. The computer stores all that info. So you want a guy to check it out first. And if he says it's okay, could be a good car. You're going to save money buying a 10 year old pickup truck. But I had customers with them. They lasted a long time. 21 cabbage. I bought a 95 Celica SD with 50,000 miles for 2K. Any thoughts? Okay. If it really only has 50,000 miles on it, you got a great deal. Now, the problem is proving whether that's real or not. I mean, Jeez, you know, that's what? It's a 25-year-old vehicle, and that it only has 50,000 miles on it. That's, you know, not very many miles. But if it is real, hey, take care of it. Uh, it's old, so check all the rubber, the brake wheels, pull off the wheels, check all the brake cylinders, make sure they're not leaking, look at all the rubber parts, replace cracked ones, stuff like that. And I mean, change the coolant uh, and take care of it. But if it is real, but see if you can do a little research to see if it is real. Because a lot of guys just lie, and they'll take a speedometer out of an old wreck car and stick it in, make it look like it's got less mileage on it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.